connect with people. Uh, Fox poll basically has it a statistical tie in those three uh, key states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Laura, what happened to being nice? Trump said at the convention he wanted to ease the divisions in our country, and here he's saying, as they put it in New York, forget about it. <laughs> Well, here's one of the things that's been obscured for a long time, especially when President Biden's age was being focused on, and that is that these are Trump's liabilities. Trump is a fundamentally weak candidate because he is undisciplined. He cannot execute on message. He rambles like an older gentleman for 90 minutes in his speech here and his speech there. He talks about whatever floats through the transom of, its, of his mind. This is not someone uh, who is going to, to hit his marks. And I think when you talk about Kamala Harris and, you're, and Ben's talking about it like it's a liability, it actually is a gift and a talent that she is able to be a resonant communicator, to communicate with fire and passion. It's one of the reasons she also has been a viral success, in addition to all of the other things I was talking about with regard to her launch. So it's curious to me that we can't acknowledge those things. You know, she's no, got I, no, 100 no, no, days ahead. She'll I be tested. I think we can acknowledge those things, Laura. But, but, but the point is, it's, it's kind of like, which would you rather have, someone who seems authentic or someone who seems robotic? But, but... Well, you say authentic. You say she doesn't seem authentic. I think that authenticity, you can't, like I said, you cannot buy that viral support. That authenticity in her years in office is shining through. It may not resonate with you, Ben, but it is resonating with millions <laughs> got, of voters. I got to admit, here's my I got to admit that Laura, led her to win elections I over admit. and over again because she won as DA. She won as Attorney General. She won as Senator. And then she got she the won nod by for one Vice point President. I don't know how you look at Attorney that resume General. and say that it's not experience and success. All right. Look, Speaker Mike John. Johnson, uh, other Republican leaders are urging an end to the racial and gender attacks on Harris. This after Republican Congressman Tim Burchett said she was a DEI hire. Later he said he shouldn't have said it, but it's true. Um, is it tougher to attack a woman without facing a backlash? Uh, the DEI hire thing, I think, is a little bit weird, but I also think that it's uh, you know something that is indicative of, of the real story that was actually going on in the selection of the vice president, which is that, frankly, the Biden family, including Joe Biden, wanted to pick Amy Klobuchar. That was not something that was a secret. It's something that was widely reported at mm -hmm. the time. They preferred her, okay, and they were forced to pick Kamala Harris because of a lot of the forces around him uh, that wanted to have somebody that would make the ticket more diverse. Right. Um, and now, frankly, those are the same people who are pushing him off the ticket in favor of her. And I think that that's something that, you know, really, you know, was troublesome to the Biden family at the time. And whether you want to, uh, and I don't think it's a DEI hire because I think, I mean, come on, she was a Attorney General, she was clearly qualified. This yeah. is not just picking okay. somebody at Glad random. to have that on the record. But let me turn to Laura because I want to play a brief soundbite from Donald Trump. Uh, this was after that uh, Kamala Harris, among other Democrats, did not uh, preside or show up in Congress for Bibi Netanyahu's speech. Um, but she did meet with him the next day. Roll it. But she's totally against the Jewish people. And it amazes me how Jewish people will vote for the Democrats. Laura. Uh, let me just first jump in on the DEI hire issue. You know when Speaker Mike Johnson is telling Republicans to tone it down on the race and the gender talk, that it, that it is wild times because those are Republican staples. But with respect to Netanyahu, uh, you know, she, she chose to miss the speech. She chose to meet with him personally and to lead the messaging from the White House on these issues. It shows she's got an embrace of the facts. She's taken a an embrace of the tack. facts. She's really... Because she's really connect. I'll just finish, Ben. One, just one, just one statement. Um, so uh, she ha she has a command of the fact she's connected with voters on the Palestinian issue, working to get humanitarian aid. Yeah, right. she's connected with those suffering. voters who are and burning the American flag in front of the Union oh, Station. Sweet mercy. I'm sorry, that's Heaven just above, gross. Ben. Hold it, hold it, hold that's, it. That's ridiculous. I got it. Oh God, I got are you serious? Ridiculous. I mean, are you I, serious? Honestly, you got to control she yourself, man. She did that because she wanted to. She wanted to embrace the people who were burning the American. I have flag? to I have to uh, qualify that because she also put out a statement Yeah, a garbage the, statement. Just listen. Dangerous hate-fueled rhetoric and unpatriotic protesters for those who took spray paint a couple of blocks from here at Union Station, but I got to get a break. You guys calm down. Up next, JD Vance making waves and getting pushback from the press.